Hey, everyone! Welcome back to the Dietary Supplements channel. Today's topic is one that might make you rethink those seemingly harmless vitamin bottles on your pharmacy shelves. We'll be diving into the controversial world of mass market vitamins, with a specific focus on the commonly used B12 form, cyanocobalamin. Please remember to hit subscribe, click the bell icon, and select all notifications to get all future videos to transform your health. Watch till the end to discover alternate ways to get vitamin B12. It's all too common to assume that mass market vitamin manufacturers have your best interests at heart. Walking the aisles of pharmacy chains, you'll notice hundreds, if not thousands, of ostensibly natural products in this category, and you may not think twice about what's actually in these pleasantly dressed bottles. But a quick peek down the rabbit hole of this subject will reveal that there is a distinctively dark side to the industry especially supplement companies owned by the world's largest pharmaceutical giants. Cyanide-based B12 is the most common form used. Unknown to most consumers, cyanide is found in a wide range of vitamins and foods as a synthetic additive known as cyanocobalamin. Fortunately, the cyanide has a very low potential to do harm because it is organically bound to cobalamin, vitamin B12, that is, as long as everything is working correctly and that person hasn't already been overburdened with environmental chemical exposures from cyanide and related xenobiotic compounds that may interfere with their cyanide detoxifying pathways. Also, there are genetically based differences in the ability of individuals to decyanate, remove the cyanide, cobalamin that has been identified to be mediated by a trafficking chaperone known as MMACHC. I. In fact, Defects in MMACHC are believed to be the most common cause of inborn errors of B12 metabolism. Those who suffer from MMACHC-related dysfunctions should be careful to only use cyanide-free forms such as aquacobalamin, hydroxocobalamin, or methylcobalamin. Cyanocobalamin is actually found in the vast majority of the vitamins on the market which contain B12, as it is relatively cheap recovered from activated sewage sludge or mammalian tissue with the addition of potassium cyanide or produced through total chemical synthesis, and relatively stable, non-perishable. Despite its wide usage, it is not an ideal form of vitamin B12, as the cyanide must be removed from the cobalamin before it can perform its biological indispensable roles within the body. While there is plenty of research on the potential value of cyanide-bound vitamin B12, and certainly vitamin B deficiency can have devastating adverse health effects, it does have the potential to do harm, and at the very least cannot be considered superior to non-cyanide-containing forms. Is cyanocobalamin really a health concern? In fact, when a person is poisoned with cyanide, as sometimes happens following smoke inhalation, and they are rushed to the emergency room, what do they give them to remove the cyanide? Hydroxocobalamin, a cyanide-free form of vitamin B12 that readily binds with the cyanide, becoming cyanocobalamin, which sequesters the cyanide, putting it into a less toxic form that can be more readily eliminated from the body via the lungs and kidneys. You can learn more about this cyanide detoxification approach on emergency physician monthlies. Those with a higher body burden or higher cyanide exposure, such as smokers, or those consuming large amounts of cassava, are less likely to be able to effectively detoxify the additional cyanide they consume through their diet or supplements, making the seemingly benign levels found in some vitamins and foods a real problem. Indeed, this is not the first time the question of the potential toxicity of cyanocobalamin has been raised. As far back as 1992, a report was published in the Journal of the Royal Society of Medicine arguing for its withdrawal from use in vitamin therapy especially with smokers experiencing neuropathy. Another study published in 1997 in the journal Blood found that cyanocobalamin antagonizes vitamin B12 in vitro and causes cell death from methionine deficiency. There are two recent studies comparing the effects of cyanocobalamin to methylcobalamin in inflammatory bowel disease, showing the cyanide-based form may aggravate symptoms of bowel inflammation by shifting the microbiota towards a more inflammatory profile. This was demonstrated in both an animal and a human fecal sample study. Additional ways to obtain B12 There is an entirely different approach to maintaining adequate vitamin B12 levels, namely, 
through increasing populations of natural, vitamin B12 producing beneficial bacteria such as Lactobacillus reuteri. There has also been research showing that dietary contributions of B12 versus cyanocobalamin are far superior. Significant dietary sources of biologically active B12 include white button mushrooms, spirulina and chlorella. The ideal supplemental form of supplemental vitamin B12 is methylcobalamin, which while more expensive, is capable of absorbing sublingually and is cell-ready as a methyl donor. It should also be noted that the drug category known as proton pump inhibitors, acid blockers for reflux, prevent vitamin B12 absorption and microwaving food deactivates this vitamin as well. Conclusion And there you have it, folks. The dark side of mass market vitamins, specifically the cyanide controversy surrounding cyanocobalamin. Remember, it's essential to stay informed and make conscious choices about the supplements you put into your body. If you found this information valuable, give us a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and comment down below with your thoughts. As always, thank you for joining us at Dietary Supplements, and we'll see you in the next eye-opening video.